Blacksmith Her Radio, forging blacksmiths together. Production of these was taken a workshop with Daniel Miller. Um, spend the weekend with him and was aware of presses but never really knew what they did or what you, know, what you could do with them. Um, and Daniel um, turned the light bulb on, if you will. And after doing, uh, after finishing the course, like everyone there, got to have one of these. Um, looked around. Um, I only found three, and they were all on the East Coast, um, and it was going to cost you know, quite a bit to get them over. So I thought, well, I'll look from the original place, look back home, went on eBay, and found literally three pages of them. Wow. So I took the plunge, and uh, I bought ten of them. Oh my. Got my feet wet with the exporting part. Uh -huh. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Um, I uh, took him to a conference and was surprised and uh, pleased at the interest in it. Uh, a lot of people that had been looking for one um, were happy that I was doing this. So that, that was encouraging. So I sold most of those, found out what people were really looking for size-wise, um, and bought another full container, a 20-foot container. And I've been doing that. I've had three containers over, bought over probably about 50. From where? From England. Yeah, okay. From England. And wow. I've, over the time, I've been refining and been more picky about the ones I'm buying. Um, so the ones I've been buy, I buy now are uh, quality deep throat fly presses that you can't find here. All right, so let's uh, talk a little bit about the details of the fly presses and what makes them different from each other. Okay. Um, typically, uh, we call the space between the bottom of this frame here and the base is the daylight. Okay. And most of them are pretty consistent, eight and a half inches. Okay. But the big difference which determines the, the width of the piece you can put in here is the depth of throat, which is from the center to the back of the frame there. This one here oh, okay. is a deep throat. It's you know close to you know eight nine inches. Some of them are, uh, are wider. Yeah. And a regular throated one is only about five inches. So with a five inch, typically you could use it, put a ten inch piece to work. You know if you wanted to work in the center of it. Okay. Um, and these are more sought after, uh, plus harder to find. Okay. What are we looking at here? What size is this one? This one is a number eight. It's uh, made by company Sweeney and Bloxage. They're basically four main uh, manufacturers, or were um, Sweeney and Bloxage, Denby, um, Edwards, and Norton, who still actually make them. Okay. Um, they're still in business, and they're still in the UK. They're primarily used for stamping type applications. They like them for the silence, the ease of use, no power. Um, and they've really become popular with blacksmiths because of all the work, the controlled work you can do. And primarily, my favorite thing is working metal cold. What is What makes it a number eight? Most of them are numbered. Most manufacturers number them. Uh -huh. And with the English ones, just as a rough guide, a number four would be a four ton, and uh, you know, number six a six ton, so on and so Got forth. It. This lead screw, which um, turns inside the frame, mm -hmm. um, the diameter of that also um, determines the, the force. So obviously the thicker that lead screw is, the more force it's going to generate. And also the pitch of the threads makes a difference. Right, so these threads are pretty... And you can see the spacing between the yeah, threads. And, yeah. and these, this here... There's individual threads that wind all the way up, right. and these are called starts. Uh -huh. On this one, you got one, two, three starts. Okay. But on this one, you got four starts. And right. What that does, the more starts there are, it will, it will be a slower. Um, the thread will turn slow, but it will be more stable and more accurate. 
Um, because of the pitch, the, the more shallow the pitch, the slower this, this, uh, the threads will rotate through okay. the um, frame there. And depending on what you're doing, sometimes you want to generate some speed and really bring it round. And, but there's not a lot of difference, not, nothing significant. Um, you'd really, if you put one aside, uh, an H-frame press, you could really tell the difference. They are way slower. The, the four manufacturers I mentioned, um, Norton and Edwards, are pretty consistent with the frames. You can look at them and say, oh yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's a number six. Without even seeing the numbers, you can see the different sizes. But this one uh, brand, Sweeney and Blocksage, they made a lot of custom presses. Because there are some pretty obscure designs they've made, and a lot of, you know, the daylight varies. Um, this one had with this fluting had a piece that extended out here with a hole and then there'd be a rod connecting the two mm. to stop any flex in this. I mean why they Ow. thought this would flex. Right? Them. Yeah. This is the, this is the stop. Stop. Collar. Okay. And this will allow you to bring the ram down to the exact same spot every time. If you're doing repetitive work. Right. Uh, and you want that, you, you're texturing, you want consistent results, you'll use that. And also if you're bending, you know, you can do it gradually, you know, just do everything with this, mm -hmm. raise it up a little bit, mm -hmm. do it again and, until you get the, you know, required results. Blacksmith Her Radio, forging blacksmiths together.